it's time to talk about <laughs> the game that you've been playing for 10 hours. Or no, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah 10 hours. Right. You played 10 hours today mm-hmm. of Destiny Rise of Iron's newest expansion. Uh, I don't know. But we need to be so clear. Far? This is the second time he's played this stuff because you've already played it yeah. at an event like two weeks ago. Yeah, so I went to Bungie. I uh, was lucky enough to be sent there to kind of... It's like a review event almost because you were out of town. So we, we wanted to get some coverage out of it, features or video. Uh, but that felt rushed. I felt like I, mm-hmm. I, I got through the story, which um, fortunately isn't too long. Uh, I actually liked the story. I think it was a cool kind of concept. Uh, it just didn't last that long. It's yeah. probably about a 90 minute, maybe hour, uh, sorry, 90 minute, maybe two hour type ordeal. Um, and then the, a lot of the what the Rise of Iron is comes after that. So, you know, you explore the Plague Lands, you do um, Archon's Forge, which is like a new kind of, uh, Court of Orcs, Prison of Elders hybrid that's kind of faster. That's like nine players public event yeah. in the patrol um, area. And and then the raid, obviously Friday, we have no idea. Didn't get to touch the raid at all. So at that event, it was a little bit rushed. I was trying to do different things, capture different things, just didn't have enough time. Kind of going through it more today. Um, I'd say it's okay. Uh, I think, that, like I said, the story is pretty, pretty good, but short. I think the rest of the stuff is... Kind of the same old, same old a little bit, yeah. just in a different world. Uh, I, I do like some of the lore that's coming out of some of these quests. I like some of the quality of life stuff they've added. So it's like they have a book that you can, you know, go through. If you finish it, you're, you know you're getting tangible rewards, which helps kind of a casual player who's playing, you know, maybe by themselves or with one friend who can actually do that. Maybe not be able to do the raid. They still have something to do, right? I think those are all good things. Um, really for me now at this point, it's just about the raids because the strikes are kind of just remastered versions of old ones that with twists and there's like one new strike. That's okay. I mean, you've played some of it too now and and you're, um, looking into, uh, doing a review in progress, I believe, Mm -hmm. you know, what are, what are some of your thoughts? Yeah. It's, it strikes me more as DLC than actual expansion. Like, uh, Taken King was, it's not revamping any of the foundation of the game. It's not actually like changing how, what I think about destiny. I do like that they're kind of going for this almost like high fantasy Game of Thrones esque kind of thing, which they've said. Like uh, I remember them saying like that the way they're telling the story and trying to like this is how they like justify like how shallow the story was before. They're saying we just wanted to introduce details which we were planning on going into depth with later, which is like you know like you learn all these characters in Game of Thrones and whatever, and then you learn about them like in an entire episode later on in the next season. But I. It hasn't. It was like ninety minute campaign, I believe. I th- might have gotten through it faster, and it's just going into Lord Saladin, who usually shows up for the Iron Banner events. Uh, it's detailing kind of a, what's called Siva, this uh, like nano robot plague, and it's kind of got like hints of like an allegory for like a nuke. It was this weapon that it was this thing that people could have used to like create anything. It was like renewable energy, but then of course like the fallen um, and like old fallen sects started using it for ill. And uh, now you're kind of fighting it back again. I won't go into spoilers what happens, yeah. but it just kind of feels like the story rushes by and I never really got the impact of what was going on, which is always like a thing with Destiny. I never had, there was context for what I was doing and I knew why I was doing it, but I never felt like I was enjoying like the story pushing me along. It just felt like I was doing it for the sake of getting through the missions and getting that reward at the end. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they're like there uh, there aren't that many missions. I mean one in particular is really good but it'd be going to spoiler territories i kind of wish they used that to kind of mold the rest of the stuff but you know it's hard uh when i went up there they did say that you know they started production of rise of iron like end of january you know so it hasn't been that long and they've kind of kind of got a lot of stuff out there even if you want to say it's a reskin and stuff like that i I haven't gone through enough of the quest stuff yet too because there's four exotic weapon quests i've done two today they're pretty extensive if you want to get your uh, year three Gallarhorn back again, which is a thing. It took me probably as long as the story. Like mm. that's how long it felt like it took me. So, you know, there are people that are uh, fixated on some of those past experiences, you know, of Gallarhorn and and the fun they had with that. And they're going to do that, right? That's that's a good another hour and a half. And then like the cost Kavostov, excuse me the first gun you ever get in the game they have an exotic version of that fan, almost like fan service because everyone's always been asking for the kvostov and the the mission for that's pretty like not bad it's pretty good and there's a nice little nugget of lore at the end that's kind of cool but um sometimes those moments feel few and far between like you yeah. can you can feel it sometimes like oh this is really cool 
And then sometimes you're just like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm just kind of like plodding along and mm. doing things. You, you did kind of touch on it, but I think I've played at this point about f- five to six hours since this morning. And I think of that time, I've spent maybe 45 minutes in new areas, um, you know, excluding the social area. But it's just you, the, for one of the first missions you do, you're retreading the ground that you started the game in back in, what, 2013, 2014? Like the very beginning of the game. The and outdoor area. The what? The little outdoor area? Yeah, before yeah. you crawl, mm-hmm. cross the wall and uh, into the wall. Uh, but yeah, it's not like the strikes, the new strike, the Archon Priest is kind of a... A little novel like this ogre is chasing you around. You can't hurt him. He's pretty much just this nuisance that you're kind of yeah. trying to avoid while you shoot the priest, who's also obviously very capable of defending himself. Uh, the other streak is uh, our strike is Sepix Perfected. Yeah. Sepix Prime, who we fought, I don't even know how many times by this point. <laughs> Again, it seems it's like a twist. it's yeah. retreading a lot of what we already seen. Uh, I do like the aesthetic of the new stuff, though, that like that fantasy kind of climbing the mountain to Fellwinter's Peak, the new social area. Um, I haven't done a lot of Archons for Jebs. I've done one. And again, you said those are like when you offer things up to the, to the, like Siva or to the gods or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's pretty quick paced, fast action. That's kind of what they want. Yeah. It's like a mini horde mode, a little bit more frantic than that at times because, you know, there's explosive shanks and whatnot. And as the tiers get higher, it does get harder. Of course, that's because, you know, level difference and stuff like mm-hmm. that. If you're not of levels, obviously going to be harder. I was doing heroic strikes. Um, I think they're like 350 at like 347 and some mm-hmm. people were even lower than that and people were just getting gibbed and, mm-hmm. and dying really fast. It's kind of frustrating actually. Um, but yeah, to be honest, like for me, the story and everything's great. I like it. But ultimately, I think for me as a min-max hardcore player, the raid is really what's going to tell me sure. how much I like about Rise of Iron. It's kind of been the case for you know a lot of the previous DLC expansions. And um, we'll have to see. That doesn't come out till Friday. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we get to check it out. Hopefully you get to check it out. Yeah. Because um, it is a big part of like these DLCs and expansions. Yeah. I feel like it's like probably a good third of it. You know, there's like a, probably a whole separate team just making the raid. I think it's also like Bungie's best chance to show off their level design and their mission design and everything because those are the most nuanced. Like, how do we kill this boss? And then you beat him, and it's like such a big deal. And then you get to the next mini boss, and obviously the final boss is pretty like usually a very intense battle and everything. Yeah. Um, again, yeah, I. After what I've played, we're going to have a review in progress up soon. Um, we're going to wait until, obviously, the raid goes up because that's the make or break thing for me uh, on Friday. But until then, I'm sure we'll all be working on getting our light up so we have a decent raid team going yeah. in, hopefully. And I mean, if, like on a side note, because this is something that normally affects reviews, and, and Peter, you know uh, best of all, is uh, we both luckily escaped Q hell, as I would like to call it. Mm. Because when I was streaming, there was... Uh, I think Xbox One was struggling. I think they almost like had PS4 servers up first or something or priority. I don't. I'm, this is just hearsay. This or sorry. Sounds this like is inside my inside info to me. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not inside info. It's just observations. Um, and it seemed like more people were struggling on yeah. trying to hop on Xbox One um, as well as PS4. And I, I, I can't remember to this date that they even had queues. And right. it just reminds me of a World of Warcraft thing where it could totally like alter your experience because I was pretty much just apologizing to people in the stream. I'm like, I'm really sorry. I don't have any privileges or anything to stream. I just got lucky. I spammed, got in. That's kind of how servers like for these kind of games work. Once you're in, you just don't leave because you're screwed if you leave. And people were like, I'm 30,000 in queue, which is kind of insane Damn. if you think yeah. about it. Like that's a lot of people that are trying to play the game. Like, yeah, I so, got lucky. I didn't have any problems getting in. I got booted off world a few times. Yeah, I, like, I, in I those as streams, well. But yeah. never disconnected from Destiny server. So luckily I've not had any performance issues. Well, I've had a few, but mm-hmm. nothing, nothing game breaking. Game breaking nothing major. Yeah. Did so play, just, played a fair amount of PvP, a couple hours today oh, nice. um, between Supremacy and uh, what was the other no- mode? Uh, Supremacy is the new one. Supremacy is a new one. That's yeah. like kill confirm from Call of Duty. Yeah. You have to pick up people's tags mm-hmm. to actually get the kill to count or get to extra yeah. point and everything. Uh, I've been playing Rumble and everything. And then I, the, the one alluring aspect, at least as far as progression goes, is the the book of iron or record book of iron or yeah. something. And that's where you know you're actually doing these rise of iron quests. You're kind of unlocking these tiers that are giving you mm-hmm. the cool looking armor that you know like we've been seeing on the cover for how long now? Yeah, it's also one of those sweet like oh yeah these are not achievements or chivos but you know there's things that you see and you're like oh okay i'm nine out of 90 percent done i'm gonna finish that yeah. boom work on the next you just i think it's just a innate sense at least for me when i see something like oh i gotta finish that or if i can it's called, finish that it's called ocd eric <laughs> He's got his chores to do. Oh God, I got chores. Yeah, obsessive chore disorder. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty true. 
So anyway, that is Destiny's uh, Rise of Iron expansion, uh, presumably the last one for the last major one for Destiny that they've kind of been hinting at for a while. Yeah, they're going to fill it out with events and stuff like that. And yeah. I think the big thing that everyone wants that has kind of been talked about but hasn't been like really confirmed is everyone just wants to go back and do the raids, sure. have them bring it up. Or something, something that would allow us to go back and do the raids because yeah. everyone loves Vault of Glass. It was like the first one. Everyone, it's probably most people's number one raid, uh, and I could see them doing that because you got a big gap between now and next September. You can't just fill those with you know uh, Halloween and uh, winter events. So yeah. wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. Anyway, so there's Rise of Iron, and uh, in the meantime, I'll be getting my light level up, kind of working on the review and progress, which will go up soon. And then, if, like we said, the raid will be up Friday. Following that, we'll put up our full review. And that, unfortunately, is all the time we have today. Oh.